Hey, everybody. Hey, Hello. Oh, am I? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I can lead the community meeting if nobody. <laughs> um, give me one second just to bring up the uh, the the meeting notes here. Uh, and we can get started on the agenda. So feel free to put your um. Sorry, your um your attendance in the meeting notes as well as any sort of additional agenda items, though we still have a I think a pretty packed agenda here. And once again, I think I saw a few other folks join. Feel free to put it there. Um just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. It'll be uploaded to LFX. Um, the LFX platform uh, shortly after, and uh, your attendance in this meeting is an agreement to abide by the uh, Open SSF Code of Conduct. All right. Before getting to the uh, any agenda items, um, is there anybody who is new to this meeting who wants to introduce themselves? Sure. Hi, my name's Arnav. Um, I'm just here as an observer. I want to know what. Uh, the Guac team is up to, I kind of like stumbled upon uh, this repository uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, I wanted to join the previous month's community meeting, but uh, couldn't, so this time around. So thank you. Yeah, well, uh, happy to have you. And obviously if there's any questions or anything like that, feel free to to, to ask them. Um, anybody else who is uh, new to the group who wants to introduce themselves? Hi, uh, I'm Yoram. Uh, I lead research for a startup uh, based in Israel called Resilient. Um, usually this is a, a tricky time for me. It's 8 p.m. Israel time, so uh, showers, bedtime, dinners with the kids. Uh, but I'm uh, on military reserve duty, so uh, so I got a, a, I had a chance to hop on, so I took it. Um, Really strong believer in the in the project as a whole. Uh, I think it's uh, you're doing an awesome and important work. Um, yeah, so um, just mostly probably be quiet and listening. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks. Happy to have you. Uh, is there anybody else uh, who is new who wants to introduce themselves? All right. If there's no one else, uh, we can move on to uh, the agenda. First up, uh, Brendan, on the S-bombs and salsa talk, uh, what you gave at KubeCon. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's going to look like Marco's talking, but I'm talking because we are in the same room. Uh, so let me share my screen real quick. Well, the convenience is I can just look over and see whether my screen is sharing properly. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, snippets from the KubeCon talk that Isaac and I did, uh, I guess, almost a, a, a month back now in Paris at KubeCon. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, I think I'm going to skip to the, the more technical bits, uh, but the, the TLDR is, um, as with most folks, um, you probably heard of the EO 14028, which is the government uh, executive, um, the White House executive order for supply chain security. Um, part of that um, is having some attestations, but part of that is also the government's request for S bombs or federal agencies' request for S bombs. Um, so you know, part of this talk was talking about the requirements of the EO and things like that, but um, because this is more technical focus, um, I'm gonna kind of skip that organizational bit of like, you know, what does it mean um, and all that. The TRDR that we have to know, um, at least for the context of what we're gonna talk about is 
we need to collect a bunch of software supply chain metadata in the form of S bombs. And part of that was really in order to create S bombs, you, you need to be able to understand your supply chain. So I'm gonna skip all the way forward. Just cool. So I'm gonna chat a little bit about how we we ended up implementing um, the EO. Um, I think a big part of this is, um, you know, coming into the journey of understanding our supply chain, getting all the uh, the data that we need to do something with it, right? And and this talk uh, when Isaac Isaac and I put this together was was focused more on like how do we get the metadata, and then the the next question. Um, obviously comes into mind is like, what do we do with the metadata? And that's, that's where, you know, um, something like Guac is going to be important. Um, so I'm going to try and get through this maybe in like 10, 15 minutes. Um, but I'm, I'm going to breeze through a little bit more on some, some sites and, and less on others. Um, more specifically, I'm, I'm going to touch less on the actual implementation stuff because a lot of it's internal. Um, do feel free to raise your hand, ask questions. I'm happy to take questions as we, we go through this. Um, so the first thing that we did um, be, before we, we took any action was to figure out you know, what are the, the kind of um, interesting, um, big broad stroke design decisions that we had to make. Um, really, what is the S bomb? What are we looking for? S bomb, not just for EO, but beyond that, with like vulnerability management and, and all that, all that jazz. Um, so, two main properties we rallied around was accuracy and completeness, right? How accurate and how complete my S bomb is. If I ending ending up gonna give it to the government, or if I'm gonna use it to figure out whether I have for j or XC installed, I want to make sure that they're accurate and complete, right? If not, I have to go do the investigation myself anyway. Uh, the second is on trustworthiness, right? It's like, is this S bomb something that's generated in a way that I trust, or you know, did I pick this S bomb up from the floor? Um, you know, how do I know whether I'm gonna get the correct S bomb, and whether it's been tampered with, right? So based on this, we came up with a list of properties we we um, um, that we want to strive towards. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of trade offs with these, and we'll talk a little bit more as I go along. Um, so the second question is, is um, I think most folks had this question, which is like, oh, do I use SPX or Tech on DX, right? Uh, standards for um, Vim or Emacs, yeah. Um, th this largely comes up to, to several things, but the larger question really is like, how opinionated do we want to be? In our case, um, we realized that the scope of generating as forms and understanding metadata across your entire supply chain is, is, is a very, very big, uh, especially for Google size, uh, it's a very big undertaking. And the more we can say, okay, let's strip down uh, the number of options we give folks, uh, the, the more easily we are able to integrate all these systems together. Um, so the, the quick answer to that is, yes, we are opening that in this case we said, Let's just use SPDX. We had um, already touch points in the SPDX community. We were already generating SPDX S1 for compliance reasons. And so it, it was kind of um, um, based on our evaluation of it uh, and other factors that was what we ended up with. Right. And then we said basically storage, one storage and retrieval process, and you know, basically targeting um, areas where we have smaller numbers. So for the EO, this just generate, store, retrieve. These are what we're gonna do with S bombs. Um, when you talk about S bombs, we come up with like source built analysis S bombs. You know, it's just something that, that is produced by you know the Gravel, Gradle, or Maven Java plugin. It's just produced by the Golang um, compiler, or it's just something you run Swift on, um, and it gives you an S bomb out of it, right? If it's just analysis S bomb. And so uh, the analysis that we did that with this, uh, looking at some ecosystem was ecosystems were that you know if you go all the way to source and scanning the source, you tend to get a lot more information. You know you include test dependencies, 
uh, plugins that I included in build, and especially this, this, this definitely so with Java. Um, there's also ambiguous dependency resolution. Sometimes, like in Python and and, and npm, you have like, oh, use something that's greater than version one, um, but you know you don't know when you actually build it what it ends up being. Um, on the artifact analysis side, um, you know builds are inherently lossy. Um, that's not used to 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 be bold. You lose contacts, and therefore you may not have completeness. All right, so it's, it's a little bit of a Goldilocks problem where. You know, on one side it's inaccurate and on, on the other side it's incomplete. And really what you want to do is to figure out where, uh, what goes into making the sausage, you have to be where the sausage is made. You need to go to the sausage factory. Um, and that's what we, we, we ended up with. Um, we said, okay, like we want to try and do this as, as, as fast as possible. That means that, um, Let's do this at build time and say that only builders can produce S bombs. Uh, so in this case, uh, it could then be like a CICD only a CICD processes can produce S bombs. Um, and we went one step further and said like, whenever that is possible, is possible, we should use build uh, have the build and compilation tools produce S bombs themselves uh, rather than relying on analysis. But you know, in a case where that's that's not always possible, um, it's fine using analysis um, as from generations like Civ, um, which we use as well as some other alternatives. Um, it's better to do that at build time than to do that somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so we have a mix of that tooling uh, depending on what's available within each ecosystem and how much visibility we have with that. All right? You can imagine that. In this case, um, different teams like Android had a very um, pretty well defined build story, and therefore we were able to say, okay, you know, use a greater plugin um, for everything that's produced. Um, for Google Tree, which is our mono uh, repo, we also have that level of opinionatedness and, and introspection into our supply chain. And so then we will be we were able to say, okay, everything goes through this. But you know, this long tail still like this, um, as everyone is familiar with, uh, that's something that we have to deal with as well. And for most of the things we say, okay, yeah, I just throw analysis tooling at it. Um, so then it comes to storage, um, you know, put in a database, put in a blob star, and scale it, right? This easy problem. Uh, but because this is the top, we, we, it's not that interesting if we just say like, oh yeah, it's just create a blob star. Um, and the question here is like, how do we create a database that we trust? Um, because we want to end up using uh, SBOMs for security decisions. Um, so we need to know where they come from. So we have a project internally, internally called Cido Supply Chain Integrity Log. Um, it's basically pretty much similar to Guac, um, several differences. Uh, a lot of the integration points to internal supply chain tooling is proprietary and therefore a lot of the interfaces are proprietary and thus we have like internal ingestion systems and things like that, right? But I think the, the principle that we're, this is a collection engine, eventually we want to, we, like I said, this is talking about the storage story. Uh, we are working towards being able to do things with this information that we've gathered, right? And, that's where that's where Guac and the Guac ontology comes in. So we're under the same team. That's what, that's that's why you know Marco and I are talking about this. Um, but in general, um, I I think I'll talk about this in terms of giving insight into how we're aggregating data in terms of like ingesters. Uh, we have some existing tooling. Um, just whenever a build is done, we have a salsa attestation that's created. It gets sent to um, Silo, or you can think about it just synonymous with internal block. Um, so it gets ingested in that way. Um, and basically, you can think about this as a collector, right? So every every CICD um, build that you have, it then emits, it does a block collect. Uh, here's the salsa attestation signed by these builders and sent to block. Um, and all the jazz, right? So 
uh, one of the things we, we, we talked about is like, okay, just give it S-bombs, right? Um, fortunately, unfortunately, um, this doesn't work out today because S-bomb quality, uh, more specifically, S-bomb's ability to describe what it's, it's um, what it's, I'm going to use the word, the SVOM's ability to express what it's describing is is um, not something that's well implemented today for multiple reasons, right? So like, if we look at analysis SVOMs, they generally are pointed to a file system. They look at file systems, but they don't know, like, if, does a, is this a file system of a container image? Is this a file system of a, a, a VM? And what's the name of the VM? What's the hash of the VM? Or what's the the um, registry path to this VM, right? We 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 don't know the information, and so um, this is a limitation of current S bomb tooling, and therefore with the work around it, uh, we have an internal attestation um, that basically says here's a reference to S bomb, um, and here's the the artifact that it is describing, right? Because uh, we produce because we produce S bombs at the same stage, the, the build stage, uh, we have a salsa attestation that's available. Uh, we can say, look, this salsa attestation produces artifacts, therefore these artif this S bomb uh, generally is gonna be associated with these artifacts. Um, and the, the way we did it at least, you know, for us was we, we vetted, um, we have about a handful of builders, I would say like around, um, not more than not more than 10 to 20 right it's it's, it's a small number um and so we are able to like go to each builder and say like tell me how you're generating x bombs and generally if we said like yeah you have the green light um we were able to do this to individual builders um and the last part that in integrity like make sure, making sure that uh s bombs are not tampered with simple we would just sign it um Cool. So this ends up in us having this table saying here's the artifact URI, um, which is analogous to do um, uh, a package in Quark. You know, here's the artifact hash, which is analogous to artifact in, in Quark. Uh, and here's the SBOM, which is the same as the has SBOM predicate in Quark. Um, so ideally, you know, th this should be easy, right? So what we should be able to say is like, let me look up this path to this container image um, and should get it back as bomb. But in this case, we didn't get anything, right? Um, and the big problem of why this this was the case was that, you know, we were looking at, we are looking at a supply chain and what we're doing is we're looking at a point on the supply chain, right? So in this case, um, the story was that there was a staging image that was promoted. So the, the last step wasn't actually a build. It wasn't building the image. It was just like re-tagging re the image, right? So because it was just a re-tagging, it did not generate an SBOM, and therefore we didn't have a reference of the SBOM pointing to, to the image that was promoted. Um, so what we can do is we can go back to the supply chain, keep looking. We see even in the staging image, it's nothing. We can go back. And then we see like, oh, now we have two S-bombs. Um, one was built for uh, the staging version, which was ARM64, one was built for, oh, I think I have a, yeah, sorry, AMD64, one was built for ARM64, and then they were assembled into a multi-architectural image. Um, and yeah, we can keep doing this, right? And then maybe somewhere down the road, uh, and we talked a little bit about this, um, uh, Marco's work at, at KubeCon, uh, two years ago, you know, if you end up having like a Rust binary somewhere that has an S-bomb, you can then attach the information as well. So with this um, kind of recursive graph lookup, we say that let's look for this container image. Now we start getting zero images, uh, zero S-bombs, you get three S-bombs, um, which is great. Um, and that's not the only um, case where we need the graph to really understand and get the right metadata um, you know, we have things like, you know, executables, uh, Rust executables, you know, things where it gets packaged and delivered in like installables, like MSIs and things like that. 
And so we 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 saw that composing as bonds using the supply chain uh, graph is something that's that's very useful and catches a lot of edge cases. Um, until now, I, I said like we, we just traverse a graph, but but I kind of like gloss over like how do we figure out what the graph is, right? Um, and for that, we can go back to what we were collecting earlier, which is S bomb, oh, not S bombs, salsa. Then you go back to the build step. You know, salsa rather than sells us what was built that it was securely built, but also what it was built from, right? So. Um, and therefore, if you have the salsa provenance of all the builds that you're doing, with all the CI and CDs that you're, you're having, um, you end up being able to take these salsa attestations and, and basically form a chain um, from the supply chain, um, a graph from that, right? Because an input from a build becomes an output, and that output then goes into a, another build, right? You know, you build a binary, a jar file, the jar file that gets copied into a container image via a Docker build. Um, you know, it it all it has to come from somewhere. Um, so salsa is 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 good in this way, in which it provides a provenance for us to then determine like what are all the artifacts that are important in this build, and you know what build process they come from, was that S bomb in that build process, and so on. Um, we have a blog post on the salsa blog that talks a little bit about this uh, this concept. If you are interested further. Um, and, and the last part here, and I, I'm not going to go too much because this is this is very specific to EO. Is that like uh, what they are asking generally is going to be along the lines of like give me something about pixel and not something about like oh give me the hash the S one for these hashes because um, that's a language that that they don't necessarily understand, right? They want to say give me a version. I don't know, version 13.1 of Pixel. I don't even, even know if that's valid. But um, we still rely on the product owner's account to do this translation to hash and, and URIs for us to then retrieve the response. Um, but yeah, I, I think in general, um, the overview is like, you know, it, it, this is, is a story of, of getting that metadata and putting it together. and. Um, it is definitely something that's tough. Um, it's something that requires a lot of integrations. Today, you know, complete completeness is still something that we are we are working towards. Coverage is something that we are working towards. It's something that's also difficult to measure because, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, there's a lot of unknown unknowns. Um, but you know, if you are able to, to kind of carve out at least create some signals of what your supply chain is made out of by using, you know, making sure that every CI uh, has a salsa attestation, uh, making sure that S bombs are generated with them, um, it's gonna ease a lot of that pain that that you you have later on, right? Because you you can make broad assertions on, do I know about X Y Z? Um, and I think that that kind of plays into to this, right? So like the next step for us is to look. Great, we've got these S bombs. We got these. Um, we've, we've got these salsa attestations. What can we do with it? Uh, how can we get um, security insights out of this? And I think, like in the past, um, we've chatted about this a little bit. Marco showed some dashboards around, like, oh, we did this with scorecards uh, in the previous block meeting, um, and you know, that's that's something that we're continuously exploring uh, with the community. Um, there's a bunch of other hot takes over here, which I don't think may, may be um, that interesting, um, at least for the context for, for this community meeting. So I think I'll stop here for now. Um, any talk questions? You were saying that you were generating internal attestations, you know, along with the SBOM to say that, hey, this hash maps to this so is that automatically being generated like so you, you know like oh, I, I the the builder knows what it's building so you you create an internal attestation along with it but that provide that information that's missing from the s bomb basically yeah correct yeah okay i think like this, this was in a day where like uh like sif had this this i don't know what the well bug or did not yet implement 
um, the describes, like SPX describes. So it basically didn't tell you what it was describing. So you had to kind yeah, of guess yeah. what the name. And we did that with, with Quap, right? Uh, yeah. In this case, because because the builder knew it, um, the builder was able to to automatically generate that sensation that way. Makes sense. Is that still the issue in SIFT? Do you know? Has that been fixed? Um, do Marco, do you know? I'm not sure. I, I know they did something. I have not looked at how how good the output is, um, but I know yeah. that it's something that, that he was working on in, in SIFT. And they definitely don't describe the, themselves. Like they, they don't just have document describe document anymore. They have something else. Um, okay. But the quality of that, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what level of it is. It is. And was there a reason you chose you know Sift over Trivi? Like I think Trivi sometimes does generate better S bumps. I don't know. It depends on this use case though. But so is any anything like you guys did an analysis like yeah, we will go with Sift versus Trivi or anything else like that? I think the 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 short answer was one. So third party dependencies are hard to get in um, into the code base. And we had a cloud team that already had Sift in the code base. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, a, and I think one of the things is like, you know, we, we had a, a pretty good relationship um, with the, the, the Sift maintainers. It was already inside. Um, so it was like, you know, kind of like, why not? <laughs> Um, we do have some internal tooling um, that also does something similar, mm -hmm. um, which may be open source in a bit, at least as a library. Um, don't quote me on that. Um, but you may see, see something in the, the next few days um, to try and help improve um, the, the s generation. Um, That's awesome. but I, I think long story short is like, it was convenient. We had it, we knew people. So that just yeah. became, and we had a short timeline. So we just, it was a good, um, good candidate to get integrated. And the uh, last question I have was, is, the, is that in total, the predicate type, is that something that's uh, public or is that something you guys just made up and you guys are using yeah. internally? It's something we made up internally. Um, we we did have a conversation back then about you know should this be in total links. Um, the feedback from that was in total links are too generic, um, and so you know we we wanted to be a little bit more opinionated with here are the fields that you need, mm -hmm. and basically have something that checks to mandate them. So we, I think we didn't want to. Um, we created a new predicate because um, we wanted to tie certain checks with it, which I think we, if we did it with links and kind of added these um, additional checks, which were not part of the predicates specification, um, it would be a, a bit like bad form, I guess. Yeah. So uh, is there, are you guys thinking about, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's any total stations Right, uh, where it contains all the predicates and all that kind of stuff, custom predicates that people define. Are you thinking about putting this like a standard so that others can follow the same standard? You know, the community can follow the same standard when if they need to generate something like this in the future. Is that something that's happening, or is that considered? Um, I think it's not not something that we're actively working on. I I do think it will be valuable. Um, we're actually on the second iteration of <laughs> of this predicate. Um, so yeah, I think this is something that we we should um, we should talk to the into the community with, and then see whether we can upstream the predicate or at least come to a, a new definition of something that that works across the yeah. Tom 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 works pretty closely in that uh, into the attestation stuff. So okay. Yeah, I'll have a chat with, we'll chat with Tom about this. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, were there any other questions? Uh, otherwise, we can move on to the 
next uh, agenda topic here. Cool. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, over to you, Parth. All right. Um, yeah, so mine should be fairly short. I think last time we talked about, let me double check. Uh, yes. So we talked about how, you know, we were working on uh, optimizing Ent. Uh, we were trying to get it, like, you know, get it, get it to a state where it's, you know, fully functional, fully optimized. So, you know, the, one of the things I want to show off here is we are now, uh, we're at that state now. So, you know, we're, we'll soon be ready to, you know, do a release and have a, you know, the supported backend for, uh, guac B, you know, and which uses Postgres in, in behind the scenes, basically. Um, so a quick demonstration, just just kind of running through it. I make sure I share my screen properly. One second. Here. Okay. All right. Uh, so nothing crazy it's you know basically some of the you know i'm going to show off some of like the demos that we usually run uh you know that those are those are described in you know the documentation page for guac so basically you know like what do i know what i what do i not know so for example you know i can i can still pass in uh in this case right i, I passed in also if i one thing because if i pass in a package right i can get back you know specific results about it you know, this was all working in memory before, if you remember. Uh, so now it's, you know, all persistent backend. So if I, you know, I have ent running here. So if I, like, so for example, let's say I kill it and then I, I jump back into it, um, right? Because it's going to be persistent, you know, I'm not gonna losing losing all this data. Before when I killed my in-memory database, right? I lost everything, I had to readjust stuff. And, you know, that was a pain. And that, you know, that, especially for enterprise adoption, right? This was one, this was one of the things that was definitely necessary. So. And if I go back in and I re rerun that query, for example, uh, I'll get the same result back and saying like, oh, I have an SBOM specific location and so forth. Other things is like if I, you know, that we have this whole patch planning, right? Which is one of the things uh, the one of the demos kind of goes through. So how do I, you know, what's the most effective way for, uh, to patch, you know, if, if a specific thing is a uh, specific package is vulnerable, what do I go, what, what do I need to go fix? Uh, so it gives you, you know, it gives you like, hey, these are the things that, depend on it. And, you know, this is, these are at the first level, this is the things you need to fix. Um, and then these are the different versions we have of the specific thing. So basically they, uh, all the demo stuff that we kind of showed off before, all that stuff is all functional within, within Ent. you know, it's all, it's all uh, queryable. It's very quick to query uh, ingestion. You know, we showed that in the past meeting. Uh, it's, it is, uh, it's comparable to a lot of graph databases. We made a lot of optimizations on there on that side. Um, and yeah, I think, and yeah, I think that's any questions around this. Let me jump. So the next topic is, is kind of related. Uh, as we kind of grow in scale, right? Um, especially all this data and all those kind of, you know, as the graph kind of goes in scale, one of the issues we were running into is like, okay, you know, if, if someone's querying something, being able to, you know, paginate their query, for example, right? So because it might, it may return a lot of information back and then maybe the database might sit there for a bit. So I want to return. So for example, uh, in this case, you know, my artifacts, uh, you know, in the past, this is what would return. It just give you all this data back all in, all in one query, which would be like, you know, very hard and very, it may, depending on the query, it may, it may, it may be time consuming, right? So the next thing we can do now is be added or adding pagination into it. So you can see here, uh, you know, for example, I want the first 30, for example. So if I run this query, then it's gonna give me, you know, the total count is 7,000 artifacts in the database right now, right? And it, you know, this is a very small scale one, you know, once we kind of start growing out and adding more data, this can go into like 500,000 million, right? So you wanna be able to like, hey, give me the first, and, I, and you can add in, you know, so you can still add in like, hey, give me a specific hash or you know, some of the other specific queries that like give me specific information and then we can filter based off that. And then we can, uh, and it gives you the first 30 results. And then similar to how, you know, pagination works, but uh, you know, give me the next, uh, give me the next 30. So I can specify uh, an after here, like that. So this is where we started off with. Uh, this is our ending cursor, as you can see. Uh, so it's gonna give me the next 30. 
starting from uh, ending that's come after this one. So if I execute this, execute this again, we'll see that I, uh, you know this is the next one that comes out. And then we can see the bottom one, our end cursor is now different than the previous one. And then the next page basically tells you like, okay, are, are there more pages, right? Based off this, is there more and more pages? So, you, you know, if you're using REST API, whatever it is, uh, it tells you like, okay, I need to go retrieve more and more and more data um, until I can fill out the pages. So uh, another example is like in the SBOM, that has SBOMs there, you know, we have a, this, this, there's a lot of information and a lot of things that come out from has SBOM, especially because we include, you know, dependencies, occurrences, artifacts, a lot of information in there. So, uh, you know, similarly, you know, I'm specifying, hey, give me the first three. Uh, this one is not, so like I specified a URI. In this case, I have not upload, I have not uh, ingested this specific uh, SBOM. That's why it's giving me back nothing. But, you know, if I do a more general query, then it's going to be like, okay, there's 51 SBOMs in the database right now. And I, I got the first three. But again, you can, uh, you know, if I wanted to, you know, filter on digest or whatever else you want to do, right? You can do those kind of things. Uh, what are the kind of spec uh, the filter allows for? So, for example, let's see if I wanted to filter on, yeah, so like, you know, I can filter on this digest here, let's say. So I should give me, give me this, only this one back. Again, that's going to work similar as before. Now you see my total count is one. Uh, and then my, this gives me, you know, the whole SBOM node here is really massive. If I come to the bottom, you can see the, the starting and there's no next page because we only got one result back. But if there, if there was more results coming back, then, we, you know, it's like, okay, give me the next, next three, next, whatever it is and so forth. So, um, yeah, any questions? One of the workarounds we had to do for this is that some of the SBOMs are pretty massive, depending on the size of the SBOM. Like if they're 50 megabytes or more, they, uh, you know, they, Postgres has an issue querying them because there's so many parameters associated with it. The way Ant kind of creates those, uh, you know, SQL queries, uh, it, it kind of, it meets, it exceeds the limit of Postgres and what you're allowed to query for. So you, you have to do some workarounds to get all that working. So, but now, now, uh, you know, Guac uh, can handle, you know, whatever size SBOM you throw at it. And it's going to be, it's going to give you the result back. Uh, so that's, that's what the example down here was, is this one is like a 50 megabyte SBOM that's being ingested. So it, it can, you know, has so much information associated with it that Postgres isn't able to actually qu create a query long enough uh, to actually get the, all the results back. So behind the scenes, we're doing some things to optimize that and we can return the information back quickly as possible, so. Um, yeah, so one question from Brandon in the chat. Um, is the total count for all of the predicates or just for the ones that meet the filter? Uh, meet the filter. Okay. Um, and then I also had a question, um, not as much on the pagination, but just on, on and in general, are there, are there any queries that are particularly slower than others um, or that scale, say, linearly with the amount of data that's in, that, that has been ingested? Um, and as related to that, like, do the, do the filters, do specifying filters impact the, the query times as well? Not that I've seen. It's, it's been pretty minimal. Like, it, it's been performing pretty well. Uh, you know, the, the heart, you know, the, I would say, like I said, the SBOM one has SBOM because there are so many, you know, because we have included dependencies, included occurrences and included software, right? It has everything the SBOM uh, could ever have. Uh, that query, just returning that data because it has to go, you know, it has to, you know, first generate, get the, has SBOM node information, but then it has to go in and, and get all this other information about all the dependencies. And then all the packages, independent packages, like it's so it has to go search other tables to you know get all that information together. So that that one is the one that has been the most intensive. All the other ones have returned relatively quick. Like I've not noticed much difference in terms of getting results back. Depending even if like the size of the database kind of grows, uh, because I've you know I've I've gone in and ingested at least you know we have we have uh, in our Guac data docs our Guac data. You have this, you know, massive S bombs. You know, there's at least like 100, 200 S bombs that are very, very big size. And then along with that, we, you know, I'm ingesting a lot more of their data. But 
stuff like that, like it, it does return relatively quick. Uh, so uh, I think, like I said, I think the biggest issue was the, the parameter constraint in Postgres and the way that Ent kind of creates these, creates the queries. It runs into that. It's like a 65, 64,000 uh, you know, parameter limit. I forget the exact number, but one, once it runs into that, that's when it like, oh, it fails. But then that's, so you have to do some, you know, behind the scenes magic. And that's what I'm doing here for, for has S bomb because some of these kind of grow out of hand so that you have to like, I, I do multiple transactions to create the has S bomb node at the end of it. Yeah, that's great to hear. Thanks. And there is a question from read one in the chat. Um, oh, will there be a, I can read it. Will there be a list query for yeah. each of the different nouns and predicates? So the, the, the goal is, so we created the list query, uh, just so that we're not, you know, uh, clobbering any existing data, existing functionality. So the plan is to implement everything, you know, create a list query for all the nouns and verbs and then replace them with the existing one. So, you know, so after that, like once, so yeah, I'm still showing my screen. So eventually this will go back to whatever the regular query was. Um, it will replace the existing query with the, with the, the, pag the paginated results one, because there's no point of having two. Uh, and the, especially once the database grows, right? This other one is very, it's going to be very, very inefficient. The, the one that exists currently, right? It's going to be very inefficient in terms of retrieving data. And, uh, you know, it may again run into this issue with Postgres not being able to query it because it's too, it's too, it's too, uh, too big of a query to, for Postgres to handle. Uh, so uh, that's why eventually everything will get replaced. But for now, just so that we're not clobbering existing data, we're doing it in different, you know, different PRs. So we're going to implement everything as list and then, and then remove the existing one and bring the, uh, you know, replace the functionality of the existing one with the paginated results. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep. And then again, you know, any existing, uh, existing functionality, for example, you know, like vulnerability checking, whatever else, like they kind of query S bombs or query other things, they'll just take this, uh, you know, take their paginated query, get the information that they need and then kind of go forward with it. So nothing, nothing changes functionality wise. It's just the way that the information is kind of retrieved. It's just much more efficient and, especially when you're dealing with large amounts of data, right? All right. Thank you. All right. Cool. Uh, and I believe uh, next up is uh, Marco. Uh, you have the transitive dependencies endpoint demo. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as we, as Brandon talked about in his presentation, um, uh, like a lot of builds can be multi-stage um, and the S bombs from say the final build might not, um, the, final, the final build stage might not be transitive, might not contain all of the, the transitive dependencies from each stage of the build. And and that's actually li very likely to be the case in, in multi-stage builds. Um, and also there there is a, like another use case uh, for, or that, that's one of the motivation. Another motivation is um, that say like a vendor provides um, provides binary binaries that your organization uses. Um, and ideally they would also provide an SBOM for that. Um, and then you throw that into a container or whatnot. Um, and so we want to be able to just Query for the the all of the dependencies, the transitive dependencies um, of some final artifact. Um, so I did I added an endpoint to the REST API um, to get all of the to do this graph traversal um, to get all of the transitive dependencies given a given an artifact or a package. Um, so I can just demo that now. Uh, let me share my screen. You see my terminal? Yep. 
Okay. Um, let me do this. Um, so I just started up the graph uh, QL server. I'm going to start up the REST API server. Um, get that out of the way. And I'll get better. I don't know if it's big on my, my screen. Yes, I think it's just make it big. It doesn't get any bigger. I think this is fine. Okay. Um, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, so we can. I'll ingest some files, some S bombs. Um, um, I, I think a good analogy for for the for the like for software software builds on um, multi stage builds is um and, and I guess the supply chain in general um is uh, food food ingredients food labels um so you can think of an S bomb as a as a food label um over some over some uh, some product um. So I created an SBOM for a sandwich. Um, uh, this sandwich contains things such as bread, um, cheese. Um, I think it also contains a, well, we'll see what it contains when we call the endpoint. Um, I ingested it. Um, we can now um, call this endpoint. Uh, it's query dependencies. Um, we can search by uh, let's search by the Perl first. Um, uh, so it's coming from Guac Deli. Um, and this link condition is another parameter, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, let's set it to name for now. No wrong Perl. Um, Fresh going Guac Deli sandwich. Did I interest you? got tea and sandwich. And, uh, am I? Um, okay, sorry, let me just open up the S bomb. Go ahead and get, oh, I forgot the, the namespace. Um, okay, so these are the what's in the S bomb. We have some flour. Somehow milk got in there in the sandwich. Um, could be a transit. Could be a transitive ingredient. Um, we don't know. Uh, we have cheese and also bread with aversion. Um, then we can also say the say the um, Wok Deli um, does not produce its own bread. Um, it comes from a different organization called Guac Bakery. Um, so we and they also kindly provided an S bomb for that, um, which we have here. Uh, so we can adjust that, um, and then we see what. Let's see what's in the. Um, in this S bomb that we just ingested, um, guac, bakery, bread, one point oh. Uh, so it contains flour and it contains nuts. Um, so you see that the original S bomb was not was not complete. Um, if you consider transit dependencies to be complete, um, because it has nuts and that could be potentially important for people with allergies and such. Um, so now we can go back and do the original query. Um, we see that we do we do get nuts in this case um, for the transit the as the dependencies of the sandwich, um, which is important. Um, to have that complete picture. Um, so for this endpoint, we I decided to use the like as a main dependency relationship is, is a has S bomb um, as opposed to the finer granularity of relationships within an S bomb um, uh, that isn't considered um, for a variety of reasons. I I don't think that's that would be the right approach. Um, <clears throat> And also, the, the, this has um, it, it. It also respects salsa provenance. I don't have an example of that right now, but um, so salsa materials that go into a build. Um, 
this will also come up here. Um, yeah, so next uh, I'll, I'll just explain a, a little bit of, of nuance, or I, nuance here. Um, we can search by digest as well. Um, wouldn't be complete without that. Um, sandwich shot 256 digest. Uh, we get the same results. Um, if I switch this, so this link condition um, is a is a parameter that uh, specifies how to sort of what relationships to observe between nouns. Um, if we switch it to by digest, we don't get any results. Um, and this is because the SBOM, the sandwich SBOM in, in the guac model is attached to the package node, um, to the name of the package as opposed to the artifact, um, which is sort of what we were talking about before with, um, with how some SBOMs don't provide the, the digest of, <clears throat> of the subject. Um, and so this is configurable, but I think that in general, um, saying that if you have an occurrence um, and so if you have a, an occurrence of a package and there is a, an S bomb or whatnot or a verb attached to that, to the package, to the name and not to the actual uh, artifact, um, then there is a little bit of a, of a jump there to, to, to say that the, um, the verb is attached to the, to the artifact as well, because for example, say, like different S bombs for that for that one package are are ingested um, from different builds, um, and the builds are different, um, so they they result in different artifacts with different S bombs. Um, so in general, it's it's better to do the linking by. I think in an ideal world, all of this linking is done by by digest, um, and or or even even with uh, say um, as as Brendan was talking about before. Um, by by an in, in, in total attestation um, to link a subject to um, to an S bomb, but we don't have that here. Um, so for now, the the way you can configure it is um, if you want to be fully fully accurate and uh, maintain accuracy, um, you, you you should make all of the uh, the links between nouns by digest um, at, at least for this transitive dependency search. But you can also configure that to to be a little bit more lax um, and allow links just by name, um, in, it went, especially the, in the case of uh, uh, bad, uh, like a lack of data quality. Good question, can we do both? Um, in a single graph traversal? Yeah, I guess it would make sense. Um, yeah, I think that there is there could be one use case, one situation where that applies. Um, say you want to search by, uh, you, you want to have the, the accuracy. So you search by, um, so you, you set the link condition to digest, um, but your input is a Perl. Um, and by the way, because this is implemented, um, the, the verbs like a has s bomb won't be observed if it's attached to a package um but you're searching by package so you won't get any results so I think th there is a case uh, to apply different a different sort of link condition at the top level versus the rest of the traversal um but I mean we, we can see what, what, what the, how people use this um and I yeah it, it does get a little bit tricky so I don't know if is worth it at the moment. I think Parth has a question. A uh, Parth, sorry. Yeah, I, think, I, I guess, I mean, it's kind of similar to the question I asked before, I guess, but it's like, was, is XPDX, because I, I know, I think Cyclone DX does this, where it does give you the, the, the digest that of the object that it's describing. That, that from trivia at least that I've noticed uh, is XPDX starting to do that? I guess a tooling around it. And I mean, it's kind of the same question, I guess it's kind of similar to like, it, it, I guess we don't have the answer because we don't know if SIFT actually fixed the issue or not, right? Uh, yeah, as far as I could, the last I checked, SIFT still has the issue where they just throw all zeros in for the hash. Um, uh, 
what 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 I'll say is is I believe um, there's going to be a new version of the NTIA minimum elements, which is going to come out, which should also help out with some of this. Um, so there's going to be like an updated version of the minimum elements to try and make it less. Uh, as some folks who are involved uh, in that process, less weaselly, where it's less like oh ways to kind of like ah I could work around it by doing this, and you're like you kind of didn't you violated the spirit even though you you were within the the letter of the law. Um, I do think that there's also obviously open questions about what counts as a hash in certain contexts, uh, given how many things could be potentially the thing in the S bomb, right? It's one thing if it's a file, it's another thing if it's like a, you know, I don't know. Marco, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I guess we do need that, um, that, that data quality improvements from the upstream. Um, but I think that currently in Guac, we, um, th there's an issue about this. Um, we attach all of the, all of the S bomb has S bomb notes to the package, even if, um, yeah, sorry, even if there is a, a, a digest for the, for the subject. Um, but, uh, I think Parthi started addressing that, but, um, we, we should, I think we also need to make that change. Oh, Mike, are you think that issue on the, 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 the SIP? things that we can kind of at least like bump it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, can somebody other than me, uh, uh, maybe open up the issue? Um, uh, when I opened up the issue, they seem to be comfortable with just putting all zeros in for the hashes as like, and once again, they have their reasons. I don't want to argue with, 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 with that, but I feel like if enough folks are asking for like, Hey, why is it we, why are we doing it this way? Um, it might, uh, push them a little bit to, to, to change. Um, you know, uh, or, or I could just not be explaining like the actual issue with them to them very well. Um, yeah, but uh, if, if, yeah, I just put in a note that he's for contact. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do need to run to a meeting now, but I, I, I I'm going to follow up with you, Mike on that. Um, I guess it seems like you, you, you weren't sure if even we, we should be using hashes in this way to, to refer to packages in the S bomb, but. Well, no. So, so I think if they exist, yes. The problem is, like, what are the expectations when, let's say, they, you know, like when it's it's just like what because we've seen this before, where two different things looking are looking at two different things for how they're generating the hash for that package. Like, if it's just a tarball and blah blah blah, it trivia and sift and all the other ones should be generating the same hash, but some of them might not be. Right? Some of them might say, hey, actually, these two packages, this one is going to hash the manifest. This one's going to hash something else. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think that that's why it's good to have this configurable. Um, and maybe if you, if you know if, if you have very good data quality, then you can, you can, you can go for the, for the accuracy. But otherwise, you, you just might not be able to. We're, we're at time. I know we're two minutes over. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, obviously, once again, we could have a lot of these discussions in Slack and during the office hours and, um, you know, uh, see most of y'all or all y'all in uh, a month. Thanks again. Thanks, Thank you. So. All right.